Hi, it's Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel, where I wipe away the stigma of mental illness by talking about my own personal struggles having borderline personality disorder. I talk about my struggles having post-traumatic stress disorder, severe anxiety attacks, depression. I talk about narcissism, schizophrenia, and bipolar. I talk about all the different types of therapies I've been in. CBT, DBT, IFS, psychodynamic, psychoanalytical. I talk about my unethical psychologists that sexually, physically, and verbally, emotionally abuse me, and a plethora of other mental health topics. But I only come on as a former patient of almost 20 years. I am not a licensed therapist. I do not hold a degree in psychology. So I cannot diagnose you or give you, ooh, it's windy, <laughs> or give you a professional opinion. Now, all I ask of you in return is kindness in the comments and respect. Please be respectful and kind in your comments to me. Please be kind to other people who comment. We don't have to agree on everything, but we do need to agree on showing each other respect and kindness. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, hit that, that, that subscribe button there on the lower right hand corner so you will be notified right away when the next video comes out. And if you like what you see, give the video a thumbs up um, so I will know which video to concentrate on more. And please feel free to share your, if you, I don't want to pressure anyone, but, um, if you're inclined, you can share your own struggles and what you're going through, and I will always answer you back in the comments. Now, today's topic of discussion is, why do we always make the same mistakes? Wasn't it in one of Pink's songs, the singer Pink? Why do I always do that? Why do I always do that? I forget what song it was. Um, I forget, but I remember her asking herself that very question. Why do I always do that? Why do you always make the same mistakes? People are creatures of habit. The one thing that's constant is change. People are afraid of change. Have you ever heard, I'd rather go with the devil I know than the devil I don't know? People get comfortable in their own little worlds um, even when you know it would be a hundred percent better somewhere else like in another job in another relationship in another state in another country um, in another place environment you know you just fill in the blank even though it'd probably be a hundred percent better they don't know what someone else is going to be like, you know, what it's going to be like to be married to someone else. What's it going to be like to have another job when I've been working behind a desk as an accountant for, you know, 20 years. What's it going to be like to live in another country or even another state? What's it going to be like um, to sell my house and, you know, uh, buy a trailer and, and go traveling cross country? What, you know, it's... I'd rather stay in my own little tight cocoon, but remember that the caterpillar had to break out of that cocoon to emerge as a butterfly and be able to fly. The caterpillar couldn't stay in that tight protective cocoon, right? Because he would die in it. And that's what some people are doing. They're dying in their tight, what they think is safe cocoon. They're never breaking out of their cocoon, so they're never free. How many people are, you know, have been like this? And like I said, you only have one chance in this life this one. Now, I don't know about what goes on after this one, and neither do you. I can have my beliefs, you can have your beliefs, but nobody knows for certain. So, how can we stop 
making that same mistake, you know, doing that same thing over and over. How do we, you know, it's very difficult. It's like a ball, all right? When you, when you put a ball and you throw it down a hill, it's going to gain momentum and it's going to keep going down the hill, right? That's how we are sometimes with our mistakes. You know, once we start, we keep going faster and faster, you know, until we crash. Only when that ball gets to the bottom of that hill, right, then it has a chance to do something different. But do we really need to hit rock bottom in order to change? And my belief is, no, we don't. Okay, I haven't hit rock bottom and I've changed. Um, what is rock bottom? Well, you'll, you'll know. <laughs> you'll know when you get there. You'll either be hospitalized, and I never was hospitalized, or um, something drastic will happen as a result, as a consequence, as a result of your actions. Something drastic will happen, um, and that has never happened to me. So I can't say I've hit rock bottom because nothing drastic has happened as a result, as a consequence of my action. That's what hitting rock bottom is. Like, for instance, if um, a man is an alcoholic and because he's an alcoholic, he loses his job, uh, then his family leaves him because they, you know, he just sits around and drinks all day. So he lost his job, he lost his family. Um, he has nowhere to go. They kicked him out, so now he's homeless. Um, and he, he finds himself in the shelter, and then he was brutally beaten up in the shelter. You know what I mean? One thing after another, and then um, he's so bad he almost dies from alcoholism. That's probably, and he's hospitalized. That's hitting rock bottom. But you don't have to hit rock bottom to change, to stop making the same mistakes. But you do have to see a pattern. And I talked about this in my last video about why do we, you know, why are we attracted to the wrong people, the wrong person, you know? You gotta see that pattern and you gotta, you know, you gotta say, okay, today is the day, today is the first day of the rest of my life. I've seen other people do it, and I've done it too. I said I got to the um, the point where I don't want to be abused anymore by people. Um, I kept seeing a pattern. I kept, you know, going to therapy. I went to therapy for almost 20 years, thinking that these doctors, these psychologists, you know, Harvard, Yale, these big Ivy League doctors, psychologists, would be able to help me. And what I found out is they hurt me. They sexually, you know, raped me, emotionally abused me, verbally. So it took me almost 20 years to say no more. I'm never going to go to therapy ever again. It has severely harmed me. And then I did this with other things too, not just with therapists. I did this with friends. I thought I needed to have friends in my life, you know? That it was not normal if you don't have friends. Everybody has to have friends. No. It's good to have friends, but not bad ones. Everyone doesn't need to have friends, okay? You can be self-sufficient, love yourself, you know, you can be fulfilled within yourself. You don't need to have fake friends, you know, or bad friends, or friends that are gonna criticize you, or take advantage of you, or tear you down, or use you, you know, um, or, you know, thoughtless, never think of you, only when they need something or they're bored. You don't need to have those type of people in your life. Um, for the longest time, I thought I needed other people. This is what I'm trying to get at. That was That's the thing I had to change. Happiness does not come from other people. Happiness comes from me. Me. And that's all it comes from. 
It doesn't come from a psychologist or a handsome, handsome, you know, six pack rippling muscle, you know, uh, million dollar man <laughs> or a so called fake friend. Happiness or a job, even, or material things. A fancy sports car, you know. Happiness comes from me and will never come from material things. Happiness for me comes from experiences. Um, things that, inner work, inner work. I do the inner work on myself. I do this on my channel so that I can help other people do their inner work. I share my struggles, you know, and my mental illnesses and you know the abuse I had and I work on myself and I help other people work on them their selves at the same time so it's a double win-win it's a win-win situation here and I concentrate on me I don't look outside for other people to make me happy and this is the first time in my life I've ever done this the very first of my late 50s I always looked outside of myself for happiness and this was my biggest mistake my whole life looking outside of myself I did it all my life I did it through you know relationships with men and women I did it when I was a mother um, looking to you know at form at my children to you know fulfill I mean children are beautiful and lovely and it but no one can fulfill yourself except yourself. You can't look outside of yourself for happiness. That's what I'm trying to say. So I look inside myself and I discovered I'm a great poet. Um, I've been published in poetry magazines. I've written many poetry books. I'm a writer. Um, I love writing. I, I write newsletters on LinkedIn. Um, I have over 3,000 subscribers. I, I love doing these videos, these mental health videos. I have over 4,000 subscribers. And this is things that I do for me. And I love doing for me. You know, I'm not looking for a relationship to fulfill me, to make me whole. You know, only me, only I can make me whole. Only I can make me happy. And that's, you know, I've come a long way in realizing that. And so I don't make the same mistake as as soon as one shrink goes bad, I get another shrink. This is what I did all these years. As soon as one therapy failed, I go get another therapist to take abuse. To, to abuse me and then as soon as that failed I get another therapist to abuse me that's what it was and just like with friends um, as soon as one friend you know um, something you know I, I got wind I got fed up enough with one friend uh, not respecting me or not taking the time for the friendship then I pick you know I pick another friend, and then another friend, um, and I was doing that again. I was going to pick another friend who, who was critical and judgmental of me, and I said, haven't I learned by now? Jeez, what's wrong with me? Dope slap me. <laughs> what's wrong with me? But at least I, correct I, I corrected that right away. I didn't let that progress, you see. I didn't let that progress like I did with the other people, you know, let it go on and on and on, you know. So you've got to be able to accept change. Um, that's what I'm doing now in, in late in life. I've said I have not traveled enough. Um, it's, travel is something I always love to do, and what did I do? I, I worked at jobs I hated, making money for other people. That's ludicrous. Doing something you hate 
putting money in someone else's pocket. Now I make my own money off my books and my videos. I'm only working for me, you know? I'm not working for anyone else and I love what I do. Love, love, love what I do. I do it seven days a week, right? I'm not doing it for anyone else. I'm only doing it for me. I'm not putting money in anyone else's pocket. I'm not, you know, sticking around people that don't respect me. As soon as the first time they show disrespect, they're gone from my life. So these are major changes that I'm doing. And now I'm traveling more. I went to Paris. Always wanted to go to Paris since I was like in my 20s. I never went to Paris. Why? Because I was scared of flying. I said, get on that goddamn plane, girl. And you're going. You only live life once. <laughs> and I've been to Aruba, which is a gorgeous island. I highly recommend Aruba. It is, oh, breathtaking. Right, right on the beach, right on Palm Beach. Um, white powdery sand. The water is turquoise. It's warm as bath water. You can, it's clear. It's calm. You can see starfish. You can see, oh, it's just amazing. I went to Puerto Rico, um, and I have short video clips of this um, that you can see on my um, channel. I have video clips of Puerto Rico, Aruba, and Paris. Um, I didn't take one of um, Colorado. I, I went to the Rocky Mountains. Oh, gorgeous. The mountains were breathtaking. And see, I'm doing more of the things that I want to do. I'm traveling. I'm writing. I'm doing videos. And I'm just relying on myself for happiness. Sure, I like being with my husband and my sons. But I'm not relying on them for my happiness. You know, I love being with them and I have fun with them. That's great. But I'm not relying on them for my happiness. That is the big thing. Before, I would rely on other people. Other people's moods affected me. I'm such an empath. I'm a deep empath. If I cared about someone and they had a bad day or something, that would ruin my day. It would change my, it would alter my mood. That's how much of an empath I was, it, you know? And you can't do that. You can, you can, you know, feel bad about someone, uh, your friend or your boyfriend or whoever it is, your mother, the son. You can feel bad, but you, you can't let someone else's um, experiences or, you know, problems, you can't let someone else's problems affect you, your quality of life. You can feel sad and bad for them, but you can't let it affect your, and I let it affect my quality of life. I let it affect me. I don't do that anymore. So I guess you have to learn from your own mistakes. Um, I don't, I hope it's not too late um, for you to start living the life that you deserve because like I said, we only have this one life, right? Um, do you want to stay clothed in a tight cocoon, say, you know, and never emerge? Or do you want to break free from that cocoon and be a beautiful butterfly and have the freedom to fly away? Fly away. <laughs> That's a John Devis song. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I choose the butterfly. Break free of the cocoon. Okay, till next time.